This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss and analyze all the entertainment stories you want to know. Thank you for staying with us. My name is Elsie Godwin, and as usual, I've got my crew with me, Ewaolu Ritu and Benny Ak. Hi, How you doing? I'm all right. Okay. Hi. You're looking so glam this morning. You're trying to intimidate me with your voice. Huh? I mean, <laughs> hi, Benny. <laughs> It's my okay. two beautiful ladies. Hi, so how you doing? I'm good. I'm how good. was your night? Good. Great. How was your night? <laughs> Let's just move to the story of the day. Um, Golden Boy Entertainment has issued a caveat to the general public against Peruzzi. In a notice issued against Tobechuku Victor Oko, popularly known as Peruzzi, Golden Boy Entertainment accused him of flagrant violation of the terms and conditions of an agreement between both parties signed on the 18th of November 2016. It says that Peruzzi has been going around writing producing, performing, and co-performing other musical works for other entities without consent of Golden Boy Entertainment, which allegedly holds um, exclusive rights to all his works. He has also been accused of threatening officials of Golden Boy Entertainment with violence rather than submitting to an already commenced um, legal proceeding. The caveat, however, expressly says that whoever carries on dealing with Peruzzi irrespective of this notice, does so at his or her own peril and is likely to incur huge liabilities. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so this is serious, I very think. Serious. And I think <clears throat> the very worrying part for me is the fact that he's being violent about it and threatening people. And I don't even think I can doubt that. Regards to, that's regarding to the fact that we heard what happened between him and Familiarity, the influencer. We had mm. the conversation, right? So I think he has a violent side. But now the question on my own mind is: This um, caveat is it endorsed by the court, mm. or is this just from the team to just warn the public? That's just my concern about this. Even if it's just the team warning the public, I don't think there's anything wrong in it. I mm. mean, it's just putting awareness out there that well, if you're dealing with this person, if we're going to go to court and then at the end of the day things get really messy. You'll be at loss. Mm -hmm. It's just warning ahead of whatever is going to come. I don't see any problem with this. Okay. But <clears throat> my problem is with Peruzzi. If you're not signed to DMW and you're coming out to say you're signed every, like your previous interview, you're always saying you're signed to DM, you got signed into DMW November 2017, mm -hmm. thereabout. And um, in an interview with um, Punch or so, the owner of the Golden Boy Record label came out to say that he signed um, Peruzzi officially November 2016. 2016. Mm -hmm. So now, it's just very confusing. And at the end of the day, it still boils down to get a lawyer whenever you want to sign any contract. So Girl, that... you've done your due diligence. You're so <laughs> like, wow. You know, I think um, the caveat is actually from, from a lawyer, from, from a court of competent jurisprudence. Okay. jurisprudence. So it is, it is valid. It is mm, legal. Okay. Not necessarily, yes, from his team, but from a lawyer. Okay. I, I'm majorly concerned about, this is one too many stories. This is not the first time we're hearing about an artist having a problem with his management yeah, team. Um, I can I can call a whole lot of cases. We've had that of Keith Daniel. We've had that of... Um, Ron Town. Uh, Ron Town. Mm. We've had that of... Um, what's this other guy's name now? Tiny Entertainment. And YC. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, and my question is, why do we keep experiencing this? Why do artists keep, keep putting themselves in line to fall out with their record label? Mm. Right, they're closest to every term. If you're not that smart, if you're not that intelligent, get you a lawyer. It doesn't cost so much to get a lawyer to read the clauses of a contract. Well, YC was on the show last week and yeah. he said something about when issues like this come out, we are all saying, oh, get a lawyer, that most of these upcoming artists cannot yeah. afford a lawyer. This was what he expressly said on the show. Then why go ahead and sign a contract with clauses you don't understand? That's by implication, your signature is on that clause, on that contract. So mm -hmm. you're, you're liable, you're bound by that contract. Mm -hmm. And so in the case of Perizzi and Golden Boy, I think it, it, goes, it goes to say, at the end of the day, if you don't understand the clauses contained in the contract, don't sign it, no matter mm -hmm. how desperate things are for you, no matter how desperate you become. Because from what the cover read out, his music, the songs, performance, everything, everything belongs to Golden Boy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just trying to see how DMW is going to wriggle his way out of this situation mm -hmm. because as it is right now, DMW is dragged into this also. Definitely, yeah, yeah. because you know? um, I read that some of the song, like Fire and some other song, um, 
Perizzi wrote for Davido as um, owned by Golden, Golden Boy, Boy Records. So, so, so now, it's, it's rather unfortunate. Uh, I mean, mm. it keeps happening, and I still feel this is not the end of it. Some of the artists are going to fall prey to this kind of situation. Mm. I think it's about time. Don't say you can't afford a lawyer. How much does it cost to afford a lawyer to read a clause for you? A hundred, a hundred fifty thousand naira. Well, you're not everybody that can like, afford that, you know. Then selling your entire life to something you don't understand. Well, let's also not forget that Golden Boy Entertainment mentioned in that caveat that they have not made anything, like anything whatsoever. Nothing has returned back of, to them. Um, yeah. Peruzzi. So this is quite the serious. The question is, did they invest in Peruzzi? Yeah, I mean, for question. a very long yeah. time, I've known Peruzzi with DMW. To be honest, I never knew. Oh, we had, started no, knowing Peruzzi when, when he was see, with DMW. DMW. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now, I think, I so think, how much yeah. work did they put exactly. into the brand? Perizzi. Mm. I think I, I knew about the, I knew about Golden Boy and Perizzi as way back as 2016. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And there, there were there were a few investments made into the brand Peruzzi. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like with DMW and Golden Boy, it was meant to be like a management deal between DM, um, Golden Boy, DMW with Peruzzi, and not so at some point right. Golden Boy was sidelined. Exactly. Okay. Um, okay. But then, <laughs> I'm not trying to play um, DMW's advocate mm -hmm. now, but um, I, re I also read an interview with um, Paris's manager, and he was saying that it was the way... That's Colotainment. Uh, yeah, Colotainment. Colotainment, yeah. yeah. That is the way um, Golden Boy went about it that caused this whole drama, and if they were playing their part well, there won't be any drama. I have a problem when people that. bring that emotional sentiment of how you went about it. There is an mm. agreement. It's an Stand agreement. by the agreement. And the question, I mean, it's the not about is, how you went about it or pay, how you did not go about it. Have they paid him any money? Have mm. they paid him any of his dues? No. Yeah. Golden Boy. Golden Boy. Okay. And then the answer is no, because if you're saying you're not sure about that, how can you say you're not sure about if if your artist is paying his management is proper deals or not. Mm. Apparently, that's, that's no, you, and that's, that's wrong. You will know. If, you, if he's been paid royalties, he would, you'll definitely know. It's just mm. what we think about or wonder about. Mm. My concern is just some other artists who are still going to be victims to this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. It's already one too many, and I don't think we've seen the end of it. So I want to wish um, Golden Boy, DMW, Peruzzi. Best of luck. Best of luck. <laughs> Let's see how okay. this pans out. Uh, moving on to the next story, Craig uh, McLachlan in the Sense assault case has gone to court. Prosecutors have outlined multiple charges against the actor in a Melbourne magistrate court after four women accused him of assaulting them. The claims which include in the Sense assault allegedly took place when McLachlan um, worked alongside the women in a musical in 2014. The contested hearing is expected to last three weeks and will be held in private. In relation to the allegation, okay, this is the funny part for me, it is alleged that McLachlan went beyond the role he was directed to perform on stage. One of the allegations claim he um, pushed his groin into the stomach area of a woman and also tried to kiss her without being directed to do so. So, I mean, <laughs> the director should I have don't just know. been caught. The question it's a stage I play, mean, so he has to. It was a musical. <laughs> yeah. The question was, was it salsa dancing? Because <laughs> that dance is so sensual. So, if it was salsa, I wouldn't want to blame yeah, if you If you need to be directed to be that sexual, then it's not no. salsa. Mm. Elsa, let's get it straight. <laughs> it was a musical. Mm -hmm. What kind of dance was it? Was it mm. lamba? Was it samba? Was it salsa? Because well, I, I think the judge will have a field day. Yeah. <laughs> but this is it. One, two, three, four. four. Mm -hmm. That's one too many. Mm. I mean, I always say this, that if one, two, three, four, five, six people have something to say about one person, mm. they all can be wrong. Mm. You know? And I see a case of heavy, heavy wine stand repeating the same. Yeah, mm. I'm just wondering what um, what the guild, the Actors Guild of America, are going to do to him right now. They're going to ban him, take his license from him. I really don't know. But however, I need you to know. mention this before you go on. Um, in this whole report that we have, a particular one of the women on stage while this happened threatened him and said, "Don't try that with mm. me. If you try it, I will end you." No, I think he said, no, no, he he said, said to, the that to the woman that I would end, I would you, end you if you that, talk to that me you're like nobody. that. Yeah, you're nobody. He actually, he threatened the woman. When oh, the woman he said, was the one threatening yeah. the woman. said, you know, okay. don't do this to me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you're nobody. I'll end you. Don't, don't talk to me like, like that. that. Oh, I'll end, end you. you. Okay. I mean, that's a threat. Okay. But it's her words against his. Mm -hmm. Nobody was there when all this conversation was going yeah. on. So, um, and there's, court, already, there's also a lawsuit against <laughs> against the, the platform. <laughs> we'll have to decide this issue. Yeah, it's just for the court to decide. Like you said, it's somebody's world against another person. So let's see. It's sounding as out. funny as um, what's this other guy's case that's ongoing? The the man who's always touching. Um, touching. Oh, <laughs> oh, what's, um, what's, what's his name? Why now? is his name not coming? 
mean? Mm. Okay, we'll probably remember this his crazy, name yeah. right <laughs> after this break. But it's time for a very quick break. And when we return, we definitely have so much more to discuss. We'll be right back. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? <laughs> <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Minimal mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? Sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Before we went on that break, the guy we we're trying to remember is Kiba Gooding. So his own is called Groping Kids. Groping, Let's not dwell on it. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Okay, moving on to the next story. So, um, actress Princess um, Shingo, I know you're looking at me funny <laughs> for that one. She thinks that the fact that she attracts both gender is um, a sign of her not being ugly. So, I don't know if that is true or not. Um, but is that a sign? Let's, to you. I mean, you, you say, say that name again, please. Princess Shingo. Ooh, she makes me <laughs> shingle, <like>. Damn. <laughs> I gotta say, you know, I gotta say, man, she, she looks like something from an animation. Mm. You know, I didn't even know until somebody said, I was like, for you to have that kind of shape, that kind of mm. slim weight and that kind of heap and butt, mm. uh, you must have gone through some kind of, maybe oh, they took, they took, out, has, they took yes. out your rib or your mm. cage. Then somebody actually said, yes, she did. She come came out, out to, to say, confirm it, yeah. Some of her ribs were taken out, like five yeah. of her ribs were taken out. Mm -hmm. She looks too good to be human. Mm. And if both male and female are coming after her, I wouldn't even be surprised if some animals decide to come after her. Oh, oh wow. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Shingo, she, she gives me the sheep as every Are you also attracted? Her. Yes, I am. Oh, good. Every, yes. every man with a brain of brain will be attracted to that kind of thing. That's oh, a wow. Are you sure? Idea. Oh, yeah. Have you really seen her? She looks, she, she's like a mommy. She's that perfect mommy look like hourglass bunny. Ooh, I mean. And oh, Shingo wow. is single. Okay, please, I think we need the Shingo picture. Shingo is single. <laughs> this is great, but I don't understand that shape. I'm sorry. Like, I mean, we all have preferences, right? If I was a mm. guy, nah, that shape is not. Nah. I mean, she said I'm both male and female, so I'm female and I'm not attracted to her. Mm, oh, but my me. question on this story is, is that a proof that um, you are not ugly. And is anybody really ugly? So that's the Yeah, nobody's ugly. Oh. <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't a proof, you know. It isn't a proof. Uh -huh. But at the same time, I don't think Princess Shingo is ugly. Uh -huh. No, she's not ugly. So. She's actually mm. not ugly. She, she tight like that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> First time I'll see you blush okay. this morning. But Shingo, you have a fan. No, you have a crush. A yeah, crush. it's a crush. Mm. Just, just take a look at that. It's all good. Oh, we're taking a look. Please give me on to the next story. Um, Whiskey 40 millionaire Richard Milley watch gift to his manager is reportedly fake. So reports of Whiskey buying his manager Sunday are, um, the wristwatch went viral, but what people will not have it. According to a man on Twitter, the color of the straps of the wristwatch um, are not synonymous with that the company produces. And so many people have come out to look at I it from this angle and this that thing. angle. And, you know, <laughs> mm. Ben. You know the man on Twitter. I think I read. I read elsewhere. Happens to be like he he deals with the brand okay. and knows so well of Richard Milley wrist watch. Mm -hmm. What he said was that strap isn't consistent with the production of a Richard Milley's wrist watch. Mm -hmm. And if you take a closer look at the wrist watch, the torn there's a torn strap very close to the to 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 the metal. The Richard Milley we all know. So you, you put zooms in how much? Oh, yeah. The Richard Mealy will, like... will not put out. Will not put out that kind of product because that's mm. against the brand. It, it was, that's, that's, it's, it's a no no. Mm. So, my point is why do we go to this land to impress people? Mm. You know, and I'm beginning to ask myself was, David, was Whiskey pressure by the fact that David o did something for his crew, mm -hmm. went shopping with his crew, bought stuff for his crew? We don't have to always keep doing ourselves this. And that's not to say, hey, we do know celebrities sometimes do wear fugazi. Mm. 
Mm. You know, but this was way overboard. It was way too much. Being fake, fake, fake is not my problem. Yeah, you know, the funny way part was for displayed me. that I have a problem. I mean, if it's fake, you don't really have to, like, the put it out there. Like. You know, see, the point is, if I get you a wristwatch, mm. why would I want the whole world to know I got you mm. a Richard Milley? That's mm. what I'm saying. The funny part for me is that people are saying that this kid will not spend that amount of money <laughs> on himself. What people? Someone spending spending it on someone. I'm wondering, come on, really, guys. What people? Really, guys. But at the end of the day, <laughs> is it not the truth? Is it not looking like? Um, for me, even if you want to get somebody a wristwatch, it's okay. I mean, it's not the gift that matters here; yeah, it's the gesture. Mm -hmm. So now, if you're doing that, you don't have to put it out there, especially when you know that it's not already. It was displayed like, oh no, Lambo and the wrist and all of that. I mean, this is just sad. It was a torn and a fake Lambo. <laughs> that's what it was. That's not a Richard Milley. Mm. It's a Fugazi. That's what it is. I Kinda wish it was around. I <laughs> wish it was there. OK, I think it's time for another <laughs> break. But when we come back, we'll definitely discuss more with Brad Park. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dollar, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal eye. You. Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! <laughs> sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Moving on to our next story for conversation. Joker becomes first R-rated film to make $1 billion at global box office. A US R rating requires everyone under the age of 17 watching the film in the cinema to be accompanied by an adult. So I think this is congratulations to the team. Yeah, I don't know why I'm super excited And remember we had them. a conversation on the show about a certain young man who took his life after mm. watching Joker. So um, there was an... An expectation that it would probably affect the way the movie would do in the cinema, but apparently not. <laughs> I think it probably helped the movie. Yeah, so because after that story, I'm sure a lot of people want, want to, to know see. what happened and why would that movie make someone commit suicide. And mm. I'm just happy for them. The movie was not even um, premiered in China. It wasn't even um, shown in China at all because mm. of some certain rules. And it's still making so much money. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of it's them. It's America. Mm. Mm. No, but yes, this, this is a like global, 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 global yeah, but that's yeah. it. Yeah. People, I think people are drawn to darkness. Mm. Whether we're accepting or not, I mean, people are attracted to darkness. They're, they're curious to want to know what it is. Mm. My concern for this movie is the fact that it's rated R. And anybody under 17 has to be accompanied by an adult. Mm. That is key. So if it gets to our movies here, are we going to have adults accompany their under 17 to the oh, cinema? Oh, it's, it's already in our cinema. Because that's yeah, because it's rated, it. it's rated R. It means mm -hmm. under 17, an adult has to accompany an under 17 to go see the movie. Mm -hmm. How much of this do we keep to? That's and just that's, major that's concern. that's a problem. In this part of the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's it. So, um... It is, it is what it is. The movie is out. It's rated out. Parents, if you go and allow your kids to go see the movie, they're under 17, then send them somebody. I think there, there's also a level of responsibility that should fall on um, those working at the cinema. So mm. if someone is coming in and you feel like this person is not, is not more than 17 at least, you should expect that um, they, ID. you know, an ID card or mm. something. But over here, I think the most important part is buying it. I mean, tickets. making the money. What's, what's, what's your face? It's fine, yeah. And I, I, besides Joker, I've been to the cinema. I know this is an expressly it's, um, rated 18 movie. Mm. And I've seen children in this hall oh, yeah. with their parents. That's the most important annoying part is not just that they <laughs> came in mm. you brought this child and you know this movie is rated 18 so what exactly are you trying to say what are you teaching and your that's child? why i so. said that i think the problem is us here because if the rules are already clearly stated that 
things you have put in this movie can affect somebody in a very yes, terrible age. way. Yeah. It's now your own responsibility to know that you sh even as an adult, you might be over 17 and after reading all the rules and know you can, oh, no, I don't think I want to watch this movie because it will affect me mentally. It's just little things that we need to do to ourselves, ourselves to help yeah. ourselves and to avoid some certain situations like the guy that Come shot himself yourself. life. I, mean, yeah. I, think, I think our movies, our movies, our cinema should have those, those laws enforced. Mm -hmm. And if you have to come in and see some movies that are rated, you want to show some valid means of identification mm -hmm. to prove that you're up to that age to, mm -hmm. to be able to see the movie. We should definitely do that. Yeah. I've, been, I've been into a movie at late night where I had babies talking. I'm like, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. parent is out with a baby in this movie mm -hmm. at such an hour? And why are they even allowed? You know, the question is why are they allowed? I mean, if. <laughs> they won't let you bring in any drink or food. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you can't take external drink external into that drink place. Then, that, but you then can... you can allow kids to watch a rated movie. That's so just so ladies, wrong. just before we wrap up the show, I'm going to ask you two a question. Mm. If you had the opportunity, you mm -hmm. know, the, 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 the capacity, the means <laughs> to, to pull some shingle, would you do it? On my body. Yes, on your body. I would not. Uh, would you do it? Shingle, I won't. I won't go but, as far as shingle. Yeah, but, but I know it's, it's not even acting. If I have opportunity or when I have opportunity, soon. I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just waiting for me to have my children. So once oh, I'm wow. done, I'm working on my belly. Not my my backside is very fine. My belly. Okay, and that's, yeah, all. that's a commercial idea. <laughs> <laughs> did I answer you your one? question? Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ewa? Oh, yeah, well, I would not pull a shingle, but I will pull something close to a shingle. You pull something close to a shingle? Mm, so that means you don't have anything against women who decide to go under the knife? Oh, no, 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 no. If it makes you comfortable and confident, why not? Hmm. If true. you have the money and they will do it right, why not? Please, when you have the money, be able to afford maintenance. <laughs> yeah, that's very important. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's how we end this episode, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And like I always say, remember you can be part of this conversation by using the hashtag Tea Time on social media or Twitter at us at Plus TV Africa. You can also catch this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. My thank you as always go to my co anchors Ewa Lua Ritu and Benny Ak, and of course the entire production team. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and definitely see you later.